Hi everybody, Adam with you once again for Winning with SketchUp. And in this video, we are going to continue to look at the S4U2 Components plugin. And I'm going to show you another use here that I came up with, uh, playing, with the playing with the plugin. And if you guys wanted to go get that, there's a trial version of this over at the Extension Warehouse. And you can get that here. Um, so to purchase it, it's $15, but you can get the 15-day trial and give it a go, play with it. Um, I think you'll find that it is worth the money if you do certain things in SketchUp. And I got it in particular for um, the ability to convert components. Um, if I take, let's say, a thousand components um, that are all similar, I can convert all of those into instances of each other. And there's a couple free plugins that'll do that, but none of them will maintain the axis the way that I wanted, like this paid plugin will. So that's why I got it, and I've been playing with it um, for some other uses, and it comes in really handy. I discovered that um, another really great function of it is it will copy components to the faces. Uh, so I can take, um, let's say, faces like I have here. So I've created um, a bunch of these offset surfaces with these faces here divided in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just a box here. And I'm going to push-pull this up and just a little bit here. And I'm going to make this into a component. And I'm just going to hit Create here. And what's nice with this plugin is it will allow you to, and I did this in the siding video that I did a few days ago, but it will allow you to, um, with these middle options here, to take this component and place it on top of each one of these faces. Now what it does that no other plugin does is it will also deform the shape of this um, component here. So this is a square. It will fit it to um, this shape here, which is more is trapezoidal um, but it tapers so it's it's a square here with a tapered end now if I select all of these faces here and the component and I use these options here uh, we can start with let's go with the um, arrange option here so that'll go through and we can see that it's placed this component here at every one of these groups now the ones here that are coming around the curve, because they are skewed here, they're not all instances. So these 10 are, but these two on the end had to be a little bit different size to fit in that box. So for whatever reason, um, when I created these, you can see the um, area here. Every one where the area matches, that'll create an instance of this original box here. And it doesn't matter, we can go, it doesn't matter how big this box is. So we've scaled this way up here and I can select all of these again, run that, and it will maintain the height. You can see that the height is the same, but it's deformed that box to fit in. And we can see we have 10 here. Um, Everywhere where we, we have a matching area, it's created a component instance. So you can see all of these have matching areas to begin with. Um, I couldn't create instances of all of them. It had to make them unique. But everywhere that it could, it did. And it really comes in handy. It's really a valuable um, tool for certain things. Now. The other nice thing about this here is I've noticed it will inherit the material property of whatever face that we are um, placing the component on. So I'm going to scale this back down here. And we can also see what's happening there. It's all of those ones that are square, it's scaling those as well. So I'm going to actually undo this first and then get in there. Scale this back down. And I'm going to get in here and just drop some materials on a few of these faces. And we'll run that again. And we can see that those faces that had a texture applied to it 
that it went and applied that texture to the outside of the group. So it's really helpful um, because it's still maintaining the instance property of those, but it allowed us to place a different material on each one. So this also allows us, we can use a plugin like Chris Fulmer's Extrapolate Colors. And if I select all of these here, and deselect my component, the Extrapolate plug Colors plugin will go through and it will randomize those, everywhere there's a default material, it will take and randomize these um, four textures here. So we'll go to Extrapolate Colors and we see now we have those four textures randomized. So now we can grab our component and go through and we see now our component here has picked up the colors from all of those surfaces. So let's undo that. And now let's get in here and let's do something like round corner. So let's round these corners here. And actually, maybe let's round these, um, but with a squared off harder corner, sharp corner here. And that'll keep our corners a little bit sharper. And now let's go through and do this again. And now that created a little more of a gap there in between each one. So if this was some kind of a cap um, on a wall or something, then we'd have that that would pick up in a render engine and look really nice there. So there's a couple more things we can do here. If, let me back this up here. If we, um, let's say, wanted to have a joint in here, offset one side, pull this out, and let's grab these and this one, and let's go through here, and we can see what happened is everything was correct except this last one. So there's a couple other options to remedy that. We have this uniform option here. We can try that and that's with the U on it, but we see now that um, these are all flipped in a different direction here. So I'm going to select all of these, select our component here, and I'm going to use the interactive version. And <clears throat> the downside with this is it doesn't copy those materials over, but it allows us to click on these and change them here on the fly. So we can make sure that they're all okay there and we also have this option which will allow us to get in and select um, the corner that we want and then we can make sure that we're matched up here so we can look at we got green coming down, red going across, make sure that everyone here is matching, and then we can go ahead and hit enter, and that will go ahead and commit that. So now we were able to fix that <coughs> that way by looking um, at visually at the axis and tweaking that where we need it. So let's look at another example over here, and here I have kind of a piece of called bullnose stone or bullnose paver. So we have this rounded front on here. And if we wanted to put that around this, let's say this was a pool, and we wanted to have that smoothed stone here for the coping. And I'm going to go ahead and drop these materials in here and do extrapolate. Now I can go to Chris Fulmer, extrapolate colors. We have those randomized all the way around. I'll grab our bullnose stone here, and we can go through and try the automatic. Let's see if that will arrange those properly. And we have a few here that look to be going the wrong direction. So let's see, we have all of these here. Um, these are all facing outward over here. 
So they're all over the place generally. So let's undo that. And let's try this again. Grab this. Let's try uniform. And the more complex the geometry, the longer it'll take to go ahead and process. There we go. Uniform um, looks a lot better. Except we have these couple here which are facing the wrong way. So the best way to remedy that, let me go back and I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to control C. Now I'm going to do this again. So I'll do faces to components uniform. Let that go through. And when you do that, it replaces these initial faces. So it erases all of them. So that's why I copied that first. And what we're going to do is once that finishes, we'll grab these couple here that are wrong, delete them. Now we can paste in place. So we'll go to, I'll use my shortcut here for paste in place. And now I'll select that one, select the component, and run the interactive version or interactive mode. And now I can click on this until it's correct. Do that over here. Grab this, grab this. And click on that until it's correct. Grab that, grab that, and there we go. And now I can just get in and drop a material on those. And we can select all of these and scale them down. And everything is matched up where it should be. Um, if I wanted, initially, I could have put a joint here in this initial component, um, which would create a little gap here as we're coming around. And we could texture that in a way that it looks like maybe mortar or some kind of cement um, in between the joints of the stones here. But so there's just a couple other inter interesting uses for this S4U um, two components plugin. So you guys can download the trial and play with that. And personally, um, I have no affiliation with the plugin. I just think that it's really worth the money um, for all the different things that you can do. And I'm going to have some other videos here um, on using it to help optimize things like XFrog um, and Evermotion trees and bringing those into SketchUp and this S4U2 component comes in really handy. Um, so let's grab all these here, grab this and drop them in there. So, Alright, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.